Right, we're off again. Buckle up, let's go and see what happens north and east of here. The main drag had been a bit of a bore, so the plan was to get to Neubutzville and then head up inland through the mountains. But we were dissuaded as that was supposed to be a tyre wrecking road. So we backtracked and made our way up north, Springbok, then out to the coast of Port Nollith. First up, of course, the gravel roads. And then we found a vineyard. Oh, a wee house for the bike. And so once again, the roughy tufty travellers settle in for just a sandwich over lunch. And this is Van Rins dot. There we go, that's where we're going. New Woodville. On the Peru Highlands route. Mmm, fancy that. Out of Van Rinsdorp, we were heading for the flower capital of the Karoo, Neuvutzville, at the top of this escarpment. And you can see the fantastic roads sneaking up to the left there. And so with a toot in a wave, we pop out the top of the escarpment and into Neuvutzville. Take the first gravel road on the right, then the second left, and then left again, and you turned up at the rather lovely Linda Sedorp guest house. And so it was here we were warned that the inland road was going to wreck our tyres and leave us stranded in 40 degrees of heat. So we backtracked, heading for Springbok up the main drag, but at least we got another look at the view. And then we caught up with our train again, maybe making a return trip, who knows. It was all beginning to look a little bit black up ahead. Didn't expect this in Springbok. Heavy, heavy rain in an area that looks as if it hasn't seen rain for about six months. And it happens to fall when we arrive. Overnight the rain cleared, so next morning we got up, headed out west for Port Nollis, into mining territory. Diamond mines, that is. <laughs> The only thing that changed was the colour of the sand as you approached the beach. But finally we made it to the diamond mining port. Not so much the working mine but the port for the mining vessels. Quite a pretty place but given largely over to De Beers. We had sole occupancy of the secret place. Quite a nice little joint all in all. Hello, welcome to the beach shack in Port Nolan. This is our accommodation for tonight. This is the kitchen. This is the living room. Oh, the dining room. The living room. The outdoor patio. Oh, what a wee garden. Oh, good. Catch up in the gardening. And then we come through to our bedroom and the bathroom and the shower and out the side into the um, sitting area. 
Okay, that's plenty, but it was quite a nice place. So if you're ever in Port Nolith, look out for the secret place. North of the Northern Cape. This is the land of a girl's best friend. And these are the dredgers that presumably go up the coast, suck up the sand and filter it for the odd diamond or two. And if you can see the guy in the red hat, let's walk closer. We don't want to walk too close in case they're armed. But they're down there on the beach, sieving the sand. Presumably for diamonds. I think they might be there a while. Okay, it's Sunday. And we're leaving Port Nolith. And the beach shack. Okay, so we're at the Daisy Guest Farm outside Springbok. These are the lovely birds' nests hanging from the tree. And the bike hiding under the tree. That's the thunder. The sky is grey. It's going with me. Good morning. Uh, it's 7 o'clock in the morning, for, which for us is quite early. And we are leaving. Oh, you can't even see it behind the trees, the guest house. In Springbok, we got a message from Jeremy saying that because of all the rain, the falls out east were running at their highest for decades. So we headed back out to mining country, this time digging holes in the ground type mining, and went for a look at the waterfall 200 kilometres later. And about halfway across in Poff Adder, we came across the old and the new churches. I'm sure by now you'll get the idea that it's pretty flat out here. Now we'd come all this way to see the Ochrabi's Falls, which are supposed to be one of the largest, certainly the most powerful in the world. And from a distance you could see the spume rising in the air. So we were quite keen to see what was coming next. Well this looks like a normal little waterfall until you see the size of this. It is utterly enormous. In my younger days I used to do some white water kayaking. So from years of experience I can tell you you'd come down the main flow river right, come through that small gap over there, over the first drop, and then, well, kiss your ass goodbye. Niagara doesn't look like this. This is four times the volume of Niagara. In normal times, and I suspect this is more. Waterfall in Iceland was good, but I think this tops it. Running at its highest level for ooh, 12 years, I think it said. The word of grabbies means very loud in the local language, which is why you can't really hear me, because it's very loud. The day after we visited the falls, the viewing centre was closed because some of the walkways had been washed away, so it was running even higher than this. And I should have said the falls are of course the Orange River, South Africa's longest squeezing through this little gap. Not a lot of people know that. And then it flows merrily on its way. 
and we'll be off on our way. That's enough for this one. Come back and see how we get on in the Cedarburg. Thanks for watching.